During the unboxing, we noticed the planks were packaged pretty well. They were double boxed and the edges were all protected so we didn't have a single damaged plank. First up, we had to remove the oak carpet and underlayment. Next up was removing the old galley flooring panel and its residue. Afterwards we started to develop a plan for how we would lay the planks down. We opted to leave them floating instead of adhering them in place like the manufacturer suggests for boats, but we did this to make it easy to uninstall and reinstall in the event of a major engine overhaul that will require you to break down a portion of the salon's interior. Here's a close up where you can see what the joint plank pieces look like. As you can see the planks go together very fast and easy, especially in areas where no cutting is required. Okay, so now it's time to actually cut and join the planks down in their final positions. You'll notice me occasionally using a small scrap piece of our old flooring and a mallet to lightly tap the planks into place until you can no longer see their gray joints. Now Nautique Floors website claims the flooring can be cut by hand by simply scoring and snapping, but my experience says otherwise. I could cut the gray edges but nothing else, so unless you're a samurai I wouldn't bother trying out that method. We found that the jigsaw and vinyl cutter tool we rented from Home Depot were the perfect pair to make clean cuts. We bought a contour gauge from Amazon to help with all the curved and complex edges. I'd say that it got you 85% of the way, but sometimes we still took multiple attempts and a bit of freehanding to achieve the perfect shape.
prepping and cutting is where most of the day and night went. For the pieces that went down quickly, that's just how it went. But for every four plank that went down, it seemed like there was that same number of complex cuts that required a jigsaw. Cutting straight cuts with the vinyl cutter tool, however, was a snap. For the longer pieces, we used parts of the box to get a template of the shape we needed to replicate on the planks. As the evening started to get away from us, we turned the camera off so we could work faster and harder to get as much done as possible. This is where we picked up the next day. So we ended up being short on planks and had to order another box to complete the dining area flooring, the stairs, and a few other odds and ends. That took another few days and a few hundred dollars to arrive. It arrived quickly, but without a tracking number. Both times, actually. Thanks to the poor Sanibel Marina staff for dealing with the surprise flooring deliveries on our behalf. Overall, we were very pleased and wish we had done it sooner. It cost us $1,306.39 and we think the quality is to par with some of the mid to high end luxury vinyl tile options available in the residential world. Of course those started under $3 per square foot, whereas this was around $10 per square foot for us. But of course there is the marine premium plus the unique offering that drives the price so high, I think. But according to their website, you're getting a flooring product that's better than teak flooring and is a fraction of the price of real teak, so you net a substantial cost savings. But in my experience, no one I talk to that's considering this flooring is also considering adding real tea. So that's just a clever way to say that it costs three to four times more than your average vinyl flooring product. Overall, we do think we would consider it again for future boats, but we wouldn't pay a penny more than what we spent for it. Also, we'd weigh in cheaper options of similar quality, a little more than we did for this boat. We did notice that we can feel the swing of temperatures from the engine room a little more than we did with the carpet, but it's relatively minor. Here's a quick sneak peek, but we also put Lawn Seal Marine Vinyl Flooring in our ambulance camper conversion for $600, and this is a residential vinyl flooring we put in our old boat that we bought 10 boxes to replace the entire boat's flooring, and it was still the cheapest of all our flooring upgrades. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed our flooring build and review. We'll see you next time when we finally share that moment that some of you already are aware of. We'll be selling our boat and moving on land.